If you're feeling like all hope is lost and you'll never have that perfectly organized house, I wanna share some practical organizing tips with you that even the messiest person can use, appreciate, and benefit from. Hey everyone, I'm Sophie from Sophisticated Organization and today I'm sharing with you my most practical organizing tips. So even if you feel like you are the messiest person on the planet and you will never have a perfectly organized home, I think these tips are going to be for you. The first thing is that you need to know yourself. And if you're still watching this video, I would say you know yourself probably pretty well if you're still here and interested because you feel like you want an organized house, but you want it to be done in a sense that's practical in a way that will help benefit your life. And that's the whole point of organizing is to make your life a little bit easier and simplify things. So there are two main categories I would say when it comes to knowing yourself and your organizing style. There are those who benefit from from seeing their items and those who benefit from putting those items away and having a more visually clear space. So if you are somebody who likes to see what you have, you need to make sure those things are on display. Don't put your items in a bin or a basket closed off unless it's maybe a clear container. For you, it's probably that out of sight, out of mind phrase. So if it is out of sight and out of mind, therefore you will probably not use your items. You might forget that you even own them, repurchase duplicates of things. If it's food items, you might let those things expire. So make sure you keep things in your line of sight if that's something that's gonna work better for you. On the flip side, if that stresses you out, seeing everything you own, easily and you just like think about that space and you start sweating like I do, then you might be somebody who's better having your items tucked away in bins and baskets just so it feels to you like you have a cleaner space. Maybe inside of those bins and baskets, it's not perfectly organized, but you just feel as if your space is cleaner. Then you will wanna have those bins and baskets. And that brings me to my next point, which is to corral the clutter. I don't care how you do this. I don't care if you are the person who needs to see everything visually or if you're the person who likes to tuck things away, corral the clutter. It could be in those bins and baskets, clear or opaque either way. But even if it's something as simple as putting a bunch of items together on a tray, it helps reduce the visual clutter, which is probably gonna benefit both organizing styles to simplify things, but just bringing everything and consolidating it into one spot is going to help you a whole lot. The next thing I would say is make organizing one-handed. Now, what do I mean by make organizing one-handed? You want your organizing systems that you put in place to be as easy as possible for you to use and to maintain. If you set something up and it's not gonna be easy for you to access what you need to access or to maintain the organizational system, you're not going to use it and you're not going to maintain it. So thinking about making organizing one-handed is a great way to just mentally remember as you are setting your space up because something as simple as even a lid on top of a container could be the one deterrent that makes you think, ugh, instead of putting this item away properly, it's just too much effort. I'm just gonna set it maybe in the room that it belongs or leave it out here, I'll deal with it later. I don't wanna go through maybe grabbing a step stool and climbing up and putting it away. So if it's something that you're using really often, make sure it's accessible both you know, in terms of how high up it is or how far back it is or if it's under a lid or not, but just make sure it is accessible. On top of prioritizing those things that you use the most and making those the most easily accessible, you also wanna put things where you use them. It makes no sense if you're constantly using something in your living room to store it in your bedroom or something that you're using in your kitchen to store it in your office, right? But even within that room, store it in the general area that you use it, it's gonna make it easier to grab it when you need it, and it's also gonna make it easier to put it away and therefore maintain that system again. This next one is big, and that is drop zones. Where do things pile up in your house? Maybe take this next week, just live your life as you normally do, and pay attention to where you see piles building. Do you see them at the bottom of your stairs? Do you see coats collecting at your front door on the floor? Do you see a pile of clothing on your bedroom floor, on your closet floor, whatever it is? I'm gonna give you two options. And the first option is to work with your drop zones, work with where you find the clutter. So. 
For example, if you have a house that's multiple stories, like I do, and you find that you have stuff collecting at the bottom of your stairs because you are trying to keep it neat and organized, but you put everything down there because you wanna bring it upstairs the next time you bring it upstairs, and then you go upstairs and you maybe forget it, so it stays there, and this pile just builds and builds a little bit until you take care of it work with it. Maybe you could get a bottom of the stair bin. There are bins that are meant for staircases. Some of them even have like little notches out of it so you can put it on your staircase. That's just a way to corral the clutter like we talked about before and work with that drop zone. Clean it up a little bit, make it a little bit more visually appealing and just find an organizational solution for that spot. If you have your coats building up in your front doorway and there's no spot to hang your coats, get a little coat tree, find a spot to hang them up. Maybe you need to install some hooks. Do you have keys, but you don't have a dish for your keys? Find a way to have an organizational system for that clutter. Okay, so I mentioned there was two different strategies. That's number one, work with your drop zones, work with your clutter, where it, wherever it might be. Option number two is to do the exact opposite. Prevent yourself from building up clutter. So, okay, let's say you have your kitchen table and you walk in the house and that's where you put your mail all the time and it's just a problem because it's always messy create maybe a centerpiece on your kitchen table or put out set placemats and stuff. So once you have that beautiful tablescape that you've created, you're not gonna be throwing your mail on top of it anymore because there's not really any space anymore. And you've also created this beautiful picture on your table that you're not gonna want to mess up. I recommend that sometimes with a dresser in your bedroom, that can be another common drop zone. So if you wanna put a piece of artwork there that you don't wanna block by throwing a bunch of stuff there, maybe there's a window behind it that encourages you to not pile things up because you wanna see behind the window or a nice jewelry box, a little bit of decor, anything like that. But pick one lane or the other, work with the drop zone or do the opposite and prevent the clutter from happening wherever you see it building up. And it doesn't have to be a one size fits all. Certain places you can work with it and other places you can prevent it. Just find all of those different drop zones, make a decision and stick to it. Along the same line, you can make your organizational problems intentional. So I have an example for you to explain what I mean by this. So for me, I would wear my pajamas once, feel like they weren't dirty. I guess judge me if you want, maybe you do the same thing, but I would wanna wear my pajamas again the next night. And so I always had like pajamas on the floor or threw them on my dresser or on top of my nightstand. I just didn't know what to do with the clothing that I wore that was half dirty and maybe you don't relate to the pajama issue but you relate to half dirty clothing clothing that you've worn maybe once or for a little bit but it's not quite dirty to put in the laundry but it's not clean enough that you want to hang it up with the rest of your clothing find a solution that works with that so for me with my pajamas i wasn't really storing anything important in my nightstand i also didn't really know what to put there so now i use the drawer of my nightstand to store those pajamas and then the next night i will open my drawer grab my pajamas they've been tucked away there's no visual clutter and then my nightstand has now a purpose to it and has solved for my problem you can also with your clothing in your closet have a certain section of your closet that's for half-worn clothing maybe it's a little bin that you have and you can gently fold it if you don't want to hang everything back up and have a hanging section of your closet find those problems work with it and create a solution for it something i like to do in my closet is to keep a bin for donations which is going to simplify all closet decluttering that you have to do in the future because that bin's going to be right there and every time you try on clothing to get ready for wherever you're going and you feel like ugh, like i don't like the way this looks on me or i cannot find anything in my closet to match with this shirt or this pair of pants or whatever it might be it goes straight into that donation bin you're not not wearing it because it just doesn't work for the event or the weather or it doesn't match the skirt that you have on. I'm saying it doesn't match anything else in your closet. 
those things are clothing you're probably never going to wear because you don't like the way it looks on you, all those different reasons. So they can go right in the donation bin. Why would you ever hang it back up and put it in your closet? One reason might be because you wanna deal with your donations later or just think about it more, whatever it might be. If you have the donation bin there, it's going to help expedite that process and you're not going to sit on it for a long time, question it, and then ultimately forget about it. Forget about the fact that you even wanted to donate it, never donate it, and then it stays in your closet. So keep that bin in your closet when you try something on and you hit one of those questions or those roadblocks, toss it in that bin. These last two tips are about picking up your house and cleaning. And the first one is to focus on just one space that is the most important to you. I like to do these things at night. So for me, my kitchen is the ultimate most important space to me to have clean. I like to clean it off every single night. That way in the morning when I come downstairs, I have a clean kitchen. It makes me feel really stress-free when I start the day. It is just the most important space to me. Maybe that's your living room. Maybe it's your kid's playroom. Maybe it's your bedroom, your space of tranquility. Find one room to focus on and have that be the one thing that has to be clean every single day. The other thing I will say before going to bed or if you are just maybe having people over, feeling overwhelmed by your house, whatever it is, focus on flat surfaces. This means running around the house, maybe spending five or so minutes per room and just clearing all of the flat surfaces. That doesn't mean organizing. I am, yes, telling you to skip the organizing. Don't worry about putting everything away in the proper place or cleaning everything up. It is just clearing up the clutter. Get stuff off of the tabletops, put it in the proper room, take your laundry, throw it in the laundry basket. Don't do the laundry, take your dirty dishes, throw them in the sink. You don't even have to worry about doing the dishes. Just get everything off of your flat surfaces and you are going to feel so much better. That is basically all that I have for you today. I hope that these tips felt a little bit more practical and attainable for you. If you have another practical organizing tip or a lazy organizing hack, make sure to leave it in the comments below. It's kind of fun when we all share with each other and learn from each other. If you liked today's video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And until next time, I will see you guys later.